Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is John with Tommy's Top Picks here to bring you your weekly Pokemon market update. Here we go. Uh, if you like this content, hit the subscribe button, like it, thumbs up, comments, you know, those things you can do to help us out. Share button's particularly good, apparently. You don't have to share it, just click it. Apparently that's a very effective, low-effort way to help the algorithm. Uh, if you don't like this content, hit that thumbs down button because I want to know. I want to know if you don't like this content. I've been asking for a while. I haven't gotten much feedback on the negative side. I've gotten a few positives, so so far we're sticking with it. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump in, see where things are. i got to fix this real quick because it's going to drive my OCD crazy. Boom, there we go. Now we're good. All right, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's just the way I am. All right, going on with the boxes. So we'll start with the booster boxes. Um, there's general rise in the market, right? With a, one exception of Evolving Skies, which I think just got overpriced. Not surprising there. I don't think anyone's surprised by that. Um, but Astral Radiance was 3.98. Not enough for an honorable mention, but still up, notably up. Um, Battle uh, Styles, which is kind of the laggard of the entire set, is at 107, 4.57 up, 5.7% up, that is. Um, so it did get the honorable mention because it's above 4%, but below 5 a um, couple of basically flats, and then the big one, Evolving Skies, down 20%. But again, this has been overvalued for quite a while. Um, although I was looking through, trying to figure out some market correlations and stuff, and Evolving Skies has the most high-end cards, like high chase cards, high-value chase cards in all of the sets, um, with the second most being, I believe it's um, Lost Origins. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but... So I found that interesting. Those two should be currently the highest general you know, demand in the market. Um, so the price has been reflective of that in Evolving Skies in particular. Uh, and we're just seeing it cool off because it, it was too hot for too long, right? This happens. Uh, so we're seeing a chill out, uh, relaxation. I think you have the, um, the new print runs coming in that everyone's worried about or talking about. I'm not sure if they're worried about it. Uh, and so what that does is it kind of it slows the market a little bit. Now, that said, we have plenty of examples where it just didn't have an impact, which is to say Fusion Strike is up 4.09% to 127. Uh, Lost Origins up 6.08% to 124 from 117. So that's a, a new spike up. I think that's the highest it's been, at least in my tracking, uh, probably ever because it just came out not that long ago. Uh, Rebel Clash is up to 218. Uh, that is actually kind of on par with where it was before. We have seen higher prices way back at 232, 227, 215. We've seen retraces um, down, and then it's kind of just coming back to where it was. But that is an 8.52% increase in value, which is a nice time. Um, I did manage to pick up some while we had the dips. Uh, I think I was actually back here. Um, mm, it may have been back here. I can't recall exactly when I picked it up, but I did pick up uh, just boxes, not case. Uh, Silver Tempest, honorable mention at 4.68%, up to 123 from 117. Uh, we've seen it in, in striking distance of this, but this is the all-time high that I have tracked, and I guess I have it tracked since the beginning because this is the latest set. Um, and then Sword and Shield uh, number one, just a core box, is at 266, which is a pretty nice jump of uh, 4%. It is an honorable mention as well. Uh, coming up from 255, I don't think I've seen it in this price range, and that may be true going back because it, it was a relatively depressed price compared to the other boxes um, when I first started taking a look at this stuff. So I think this might be the highest price it's ever been. Pretty interesting there. Um, not surprising with the new set coming out, in my opinion. All right, moving on to cases. We have Astral Radiance at 4.97, just shy of the 5% to get a heat map marking, uh, but $739 for a case still seems like a pretty good deal, I'll be honest. Anything under like 800 right now, it feels like a good deal just because the rest of the market's at 800 plus. Um, that said, 739 is, you know, quite a bit of money for a box, a case that has... You know, it's two sets back, right? It's not that far back. It, and these prices are crazy, right? It was five seventy nine. It was two hundred dollars cheaper, you know, a couple weeks ago. So keep that in mind with all this stuff. This is a bit crazy. We're just seeing some crazy activity in these markets, and you just gotta you gotta navigate yourself, right? Gotta figure out what works for you and what kind of risk profile you want to go on. It's usually better in hype markets to be selling than buying, but I can understand that desire to not want to miss out, and maybe it'll keep going up, but I guarantee you at some point we'll see some retraces. 
that said, some things will not retrace, and that means you may miss out. So you gotta you gotta make that decision for yourself. All right, moving on. Involving skies dropped thirteen point one six percent, chilling it out. That is nice if you're looking to get that, because uh, it's been crazy price, crazy price, crazy price. Uh, we did see a retrace here, thirteen percent. Um, might be the opportunity to buy if you want. I definitely took some time to think about it. I think I'm gonna hold off. Um, because even though it's a 13% discount from its high, I, I do feel that we'll see some, some relaxation on evolving skies for a little bit. Cause it just got so far so fast. Uh, that said, it does have a lot of high value cards in it. Um, yeah, so, uh, I, I will keep an eye on this. If it goes down next week, I may pull the trigger on a case of this. It's just a lot of capital to outlay at this point when, um, when it's we're kind of at an uncertain juncture with the new reprints and everything wouldn't it be funny if we got an evolving skies reprint um i wonder if that's gonna happen we'll find out anyways fusion strike booster box 5.6 down so 5.6 percent down to 848 another potential discount deal uh, 848 is really not that low though, considering, you know, two months ago is 600, you know, it's, it, we're still at a very elevated price. So this is just like bouncing off the top, you know, uh, revision to the mean. So uh, a couple pieces of news, uh, Tommy pointed out in the podcast, go take a listen to it. Um, but there is a company called game nerds that has discounted pre-order price boxes for the new Scarlet and Violet set. So you can buy it for it, well, if you buy a case, you get it for 104 a box, which is a pretty good discount considering the new MSRP is 161. Um, now, granted, you are pre-ordering three months in advance, so they get to keep your money for three months. It's a free loan to them, interest-free. Um, that part's kind of not the best. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Okay, 104 is pretty good. You know, it was at six. Uh, for 624 total something like that um plus tax and shipping obviously um but you know 624 for the case a msrp case would go for 966 i didn't even realize that the cases are going to be a thousand dollars a piece going forward um what do you think about that let me know in the comments because i feel like a thousand dollar case is too much for how variable a case opening is in pokemon right the way they construct the product itself um thousand dollars feels expensive when compared to a case of magic um magic uh what are they called draft boxes is like 660 we'll say 670 right and we're talking 966 for a case um I, yeah it's hard it's hard to say this is a good idea i think they may be overdoing it with pokemon i think we may see this is all speculation of course i think we may see kind of a pullback uh with this new set and kind of um what we saw with magic when they increased their prices for stuff you saw a definite dip in in demand i mean it was just there there was a market dip and this is before they screwed everything up it was just when the prices came out there's a dip in demand. There's less people that want to pay that price. It will come back. It's just, I think we'll see an immediate dip. And so that may slow things down with the Scarlet and Violet era. That is my speculation. We shall see what happens when it comes out. Maybe I'm just dead wrong and all the money's in Pokemon now and they don't care what the price is. But $1,000 for six booster boxes, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel like it's the right price. But um, I'm relatively new to the Pokemon space, so let me know what you think. All right, on to the charts. As always, Sword and Shield is boring, has nothing to show. Um, Sword and Shield 2, which is Rebel Clash, is uh, running at parity. Not too exciting. Uh, slight premium. Um, Darkness of Blaze, slight premium. It is tightening. This would be an interesting thing because we have seen it dip below. I'm going to keep an eye on because I actually do want like a Darkness of Blaze and Vivid Voltage case if I can get one. Um, but I won't really pull the trigger unless we see this premium drop below the box prices. Um, and not on a spike. Like if this spikes up suddenly by 10, 15% and this is flat, I probably will not pull the trigger. But if this either dips or this slow climbs above it, then I'll pull the trigger because that would be an interesting opportunity. It means the prices of the boxes are actually, you know, climbing naturally is what it feels like. So that's that's kind of the opportunity I'm looking for right now for these older ones that I haven't managed to get a hold of yet. Um, Sword and Shield 4, Vivid Voltage. See, this is actually starting to show what I was looking at. I was looking at this last week for this buy. 
Mm, this is tough. I might actually pull the trigger on this one this week. Um, Vivid Voltage was on my list of cases I wanted to grab as well. It's not They're not the hottest, and that's kind of why it's a good buy, because eventually they'll go up anyways. Uh, with the exception of Battle Styles, I don't see any of these cases as being just, like, dead. Um, and Battle Styles isn't dead either. It's gone up too. It's just the least liked. So let me know in the comments. If, if Vivid Voltage is a terrible buy because the Pokemon in there, everyone hates them and it's just ugly or terrible. I don't know. Like, for whatever reason, let me know. Um, I think it's a reasonable move to go into Darkness, Ablaze, and Vivid Voltage, being that they're very old products. They're not likely to get a reprint, and they will tick up. Um, again, this is for a five-year hold, three-year hold at minimum. Um, that's kind of the thought process there, unless things spike crazily. So that's I'm, I am definitely looking at that. Those two are on my target list right now. So moving on. Battle Styles, as we said, the premium's intact, but barely. Um, it is ticking up, like I said, but it is the laggard. It is the last one to show up to the party. Party seems like it's almost over, just with uh, the cooling off across the, the higher end stuff. Uh, Battle, uh, sorry, not Battle Styles. Chilling Rain has a slight premium as well. Nothing special there, other than Chilling Rain is at the 130 mark, pretty high. Um, we're going to see if this curls over and comes back down. I have a sense that some of these are going to curl over and come back down. I'm not sure if all of them will, but some of them will. And Evolving Skies, we've already seen the curl over, but that's after this, like, crazy run up. I mean, we got to $300 a box. That's nutso. That's too much. We were talking about how nutso that was. But this is how quick it can turn. Like, imagine this section wasn't here, these two. So it just ended there, right? You just see this slow, 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 slow increasing speed up, and it looks like it's just going to go parabolic. Instead, it crashes down back to way back here where it was, you know, two months ago. Um, so that's something that's interesting. Premium is intact, uh, makes it hard to pull the trigger on that buy, but it is down significantly. Like we said, 13%. Uh, it's a fairly good deal compared to what we've seen recently, but it's not like you know, it's not that far back. This is actually only two or three weeks back, right? Because that was back here. So the cases kind of flew up real fast um, when it was a lower, like a kind of a depressed demand before. Now the whole thing crashed. The uh, box price has crashed so low. Um, and it actually might be worth picking up as just single boxes because of how far down they came. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Anyways, moving on to Fusion Strike. Fusion Strike still has a premium intact, cooled off. We did see that just diverge completely. I'm glad it's tightening up because that was insane. Um, so now it's coming back into a more reasonable uh, premium range. And Brilliant Stars, did it change? No, I, I clicked the wrong thing. I was like, it didn't change. All right, uh, Brilliant Stars, my God, look at this chart. This is crazy. What the heck even happened here? I'm curious what that was about. Anyways, uh, now they're more in parity, so that's good, because <laughs> that was insane, whatever that was. Uh, more in parity, uh, slight premium, not a big premium. You did have a chance to get a slight $3 uh, arbitrage opportunity last week. Clearly, these are doing the dance um, and tightening up. Uh, again, Brilliant Stars seems like it's high probability of getting a reprint, so we'll probably see more volatility with that as we hear more about what's coming out. Astral Radiance is a nice loved product, clearly climbing, um, parity, sticking tight. This is kind of a nice dance we want to see. Um, I do expect a reprint of that, but I have no news on that. Um, now, this one's crazy. Lost Origin, and I know why this is happening, is because the cards, Lost Origin is the second most popular when it comes to highest priced singles. So if you get a case, you have a higher probability of certain cards being pulled, at least one, right? And one of those certain cards, the, the high-end cards, the chase cards, are really valuable. Like, they are really valuable. They don't quite make up for the case price, which is where I get a little confused why people are willing to do this. But at the same time, it is, you have a reasonable odd, so the demand is there. The premium, I think, is overinflated, but we'll see, especially since we'll probably get a reprint on this. So we're going to see these cases come back. Um, so I don't really feel like that's necessary. Maybe it was just because the hype and, and people sold out, you know, they just, the distributors just sold out really fast because there's so much money coming in. It was the cheapest product for a second there. And it was just easy to do. Plus it has good chase cards. Uh, Silver Tempest, um, if I recall, yeah, it's just in premium. I mean, uh, no premium mode It's it's in parity. We're just seeing this travel with the market. It is up pretty high for how fast for this product is coming out i mean it should not be in the 120 range at this based on previous data that i've been looking at um it just really shouldn't be at this range so far 
It's got good cards in it, but at the same time, it's way too early. We're definitely going to get another print of this. Oh, God. You can't even say definite anymore, right? Because we just don't know with with some of the way the print runs are working and the, the issues they've been having. But it seems highly likely that we'll see another run of these at some point. Uh, will the market be able to absorb it? That's the big question. Will they be moved on to Scarlet and Violet um, pretty heavily by the time this happens? We don't know. So anyways, that's it for this week. If you like this content, hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're collecting. Let me know what your favorite set is. Let me know what your favorite Pokemon is. I, I do want to know these things. I want to hear what people are doing with this stuff um, and what they like about it and what they don't like about it. Tell me what your least favorite set is and why. Um, other than Battle Styles, because Battle Styles is clearly the least favorite. But what's your second least favorite, right? Um, I just want to hear about it. I want to know what you guys are thinking. So, uh, like I said, if you like this content, hit the button. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.